is true or is not true. Right? The is true or is not true, it just it just describes the truth value of the statement. If there's no truth value of the statement, you just added another like completely completely incoherent bit of the sentence on. <laughs> it just doesn't mean anything. Okay. So I guess maybe what's interesting about that is that Sneagle Floor could mean something to someone, but if it doesn't mean anything to the speaker, then it would be non-propositional in that context. Yeah, mm -hmm. the speaker, the words and the concepts that are communicated by the speaker are what's relevant. Like, uh, I, can, mm -hmm. I can assign some value to that, but I'd just be equivocating between the utterance that you made and what I came to make. Right? right. It's like, well, it's not going to be the same proposition, right? It'd be like the same way that like we can both hold different, different definitions of what a Sneagle Floop is. Right. And it's just going to, the truth value of the statement to be based on your definition of it, not mine. Right. Yeah, I understand that. So, like the speakers. I hate, I hate researching that for you. Like, this is what I was saying. I can't, like, literally end it. So I got my roommate talking in the background. I apologize. I know worse. Let's see, where were we? Um, Oh yeah, you were talking about intuition, intuitionistic logic. You you said you have to either reject no, uh, double negation, or uh, what was the other rule? Law of excluded middle. Well, law of excluded middle is is like one of the. So wait, is it mm -hmm. law of excluded middle or double negation? Uh, I think I think if you reject either, you you essentially end up with the same, um, with the same rules of inference. So, yeah, I guess and, I need to look into that because I, I just don't know anything about that. Yeah, well, it, it's yeah, I didn't know too much about it either. Um, oh yeah. Until, howdy. Hey, yeah, I saw that video you posted against like the law of the excluded middle. Oh I'm yeah. Trying to watch, I just haven't gotten around to it. Yeah, yeah, it seems super fascinating because that also seems to me to be. A little bit like i don't know strange in logic right mm -hmm. yeah i mean um i mean if, if something isn't provable and it makes sense to me to say you know we wouldn't just accept that that statement is true or false or whatever like i i would say yeah it's i mean to me it, it comes across as like being non-propositional um and that that would be one reason for not accepting the law of excluded middle, right? It's because there because might just be come off as non-propositional. Well, no, 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 not just that, but it comes across to me as if you know, it's like effectively, it would be as if it was non-propositional because I can't determine, you know, like its truth condition, right? It's not. It's not because it's not a proposition necessarily. I wouldn't know. You know, it might be. A cool. Well, we we just haven't proved it yet. Like we haven't, we haven't, uh, like we haven't done, I don't know, the work necessary to prove it, right? Maybe it, maybe it would take an infinite amount of time, right? But that, I don't think that's fine to reject the law of the stupid middle. Right? So like, I don't, I'm not sure whether it's a proposition or not. Does it mean that, like, if it is a proposition, it can hold a truth value besides zero or one? So I, I'd just be curious, like, what the other truth values would be reference to that. Um, it's like it counts, it's wildly intuitive. Like, so you're gonna have to make like a really strong case for it, and then on top of that, it's just like it doesn't seem to be. This doesn't seem to be like right, persuasive. It's just like because I can't determine the truth value of something. Uh, there's a truth value other than true or false. Well, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's so much about the truth value as it is about the provability of the statement, mm -hmm. right? Well, yeah, but we can imagine that some statements are true, and they're like 100% true, and there's no provability to that, right? So like an example of a statement which does have a truth value be like the amount of atoms in the sun, right? There are like X number of atoms in the sun, and X is just like, let's imagine it like represents the exact number of atoms in the sun right now, right? It's ever-changing as my sentence goes on. There is a true, there's a truth of the matter when it comes to the amount of atoms in the sun, right? That we have no ability to prove that. You or I cannot prove that if there's no use for us to prove that, but there is still a true statement Right, in the same way, like um, if there was like a like a squirrel behind a tree, who like you you never saw, and like it always moved to the other end of the tree if you circled around it, right? The squirrel would still be on the other end of the tree, even if there'd be no way of you proving that. Right? You, you, you wouldn't figure that out. And they're just things that are true, and we don't know that they're true. I don't, I don't think there's a problem with that. I think it's like it's pretty obvious. To you. 
Right. And I think that just, you know, that's just a consequence of starting from different axioms. Like, yeah, if you do accept the law of excluded middle, then of course, yeah, that would, it would lead you to that conclusion, right? It's, you know, like P or not P is just going to be true because it's got to be one or the other, right? But yeah, if you, if you don't start from that, then of course, you're not going to be able to... Yeah. I'm curious as to as to why one would reject the law of excluded middle, right? It, to me, and to most people, it does seem intuitive. It's thing it either is the case or it's not the case if it's a proposition. I would hold the truth value. They say there is a truth or if it's a truth or a falsity in the statement, right? Then it's going to be true or it's going to be false. It's not going to be this this third thing in between true and false. Um, the, the the things that I've seen people making the the arguments seem to be very similar to like dialectic cases where you have ambiguous language. But ambiguous language is like the, the, the true value of it, just like the proposition remains kind of unknown, which doesn't tell us whether the proposition is as a, as a truth and a false value, or whether the proposition has something in between the true and a false value. But it just tells yeah. us that we don't know what the proposition even is. Um, well, someone, so I, I don't some, find that very persuasive either. But I have one who says, so like, you go ahead and reject that. Well, oh, go ahead. Go. Oh, someone could challenge that, though, right? They could say it's not that it's unknown. It's that its actual state is one of indeterminacy. That the actual state is one of indeterminacy. So could you give me yeah. an example of the state that is an indeterminacy? Um, like, it's what, hard to what, what, be, what, Let's say that we have the truth value, right? Like, in fact, I'm not even going to push you on that, right? That, maybe that's where you feel like you're kind of being on spot there. Like, just tell me, what is like a truth value of like 0.5 like represent? What does that mean? Right, like, um, what, what does it tell us about the world? It would be 0.5 for that. Um, I don't know how to. I, I feel like maybe I'm stepping into oh, a space 5, that sorry, is. Not for some, so. Yeah, yeah what you um, want to say I mean, something? It, sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah. Um, I think that it like represents something which is per se, um, blurry or like has yet to be solidified or concretized, right? So um, it's things which blurry stated, or things has yet to be. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so like things which exist in a state of ambiguity, such as, um, uh, if that makes sense. <laughs> it exists in a so, state of ambiguity. So, yeah, so it's well, like a lot of... I understand like, that some things exist within a state of ambiguity, but in states of ambiguity, I take that to be a statement about what we know, right? It's, it's, a, it's ambiguous to us. It's ambiguous to a given subject, right? To say something like ambiguously true or false... I think speaks to the subject's knowledge about the given I'm proposition. I'm really curious what the other person the proposition was saying and want them to finish their statement, Where? if that could be okay. Mm -hmm. Which person? Um, Coda, I think. Oh, Before yeah. Um, you're interrupted. Oh, I guess, like, if you go with um, a correspondence theory of, or, like, idea about truth, that, like, um, I guess makes sense to say that, like, ambiguity is, like, simply not known. It's knowing something, because you could say, well, there is some um determined state i just have faith in it it's just outside of my perspective um i guess like if you had different ideas though like um if you're more like a phenomenalist then maybe you would say well things are directly existing in a state of ambiguity i can observe it within my own personal experience um which is simply the things which i am not focusing on right they are existing in a state of ambiguity to me in a state of like some range of possibilities which is indeterminate Okay, so I have no idea why the person said, let them finish their statement. That was the person who asked me a question. I have no idea what the uh, person said totally about. That totally made sense to me. From what I okay. understood, you asked Coda a question, well, whether it made and then like, interrupted them. Coda, yeah. No, no, Coda asked me a question. They said, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. I responded. So I responded. I do understand the statement. <laughs> Saying you're mad is not like, I don't know if it helps the case or not. It's like a weird troll thing. But no, why, in the, in the case of like, a subjective person, in the case of like a subjective person, like saying that the truth value is based on like a subject, you have to get other really unintuitive conclusions, which are like clearly not true, right? Like to say like the number of atoms in the sun is like, yeah, there's, it, there's, it's not, there's no true number of atoms in the sun or something like that. It's, we're like, it's inaccessible for us. So like we're not focused on that. There's something of that nature. Right? It's really pretty obvious that we can discover yeah. things that are true, right? And they're not made true in will of their discovery, right? There could be true things that you and I don't know and we never know. And, and to have to reject that, I think, not only makes the view un, like unparsimonious, right? You're you're rejecting something um, with with very little reason. You're rejecting something with very little reason. It seems very less it's a lot of power as to what we use truth to represent. You have very little reason to do what? To reject the idea 
that things are true, not in lieu of like us knowing them. Mm-hmm. Right? Like that, that the things. knowledge of oh, something and the truth of something are not, they're not connected in the way of like knowledge is required for the truth statement. Um, I don't see why you um, wouldn't have a reason to reject that. Um, what reason? So, why you wouldn't have a reason to reject that? I mean, you give tons me the of people formulate any. I mean, tons of people formulate all kinds of reasons to reject that. Um, so, I mean, reason in a philosophical sense. I mean, a true reason. Not like some people are mistaken. Like, you're looking mistaken about things, and and for that, like that, you say like like Hitler had a reason to do the Holocaust or something, right? Like that mm-hmm. isn't is not really relevant to the way I'm using the reason. But like, what's the what's the true reason to reject that? Why do you have to? Have why why would you why would you? Say, why do you have to have a reason? Because it's not parsimonious otherwise. Why is it, it not parsimonious? You less likely. Like, like, I take anti realism very, very parsimonious. Anti realism about truth could be really parsimonious. Um, I don't know about. Uh, so about the like reason it's unparsimonious. Reality. Yeah. About mind independent reality. So, the re- I, I'm not sure what that means. We can touch back on that, I guess, at, at some okay. point. But. Uh, to say that is not parsimonious just means that, like, you're making a proposition, an unintuitive proposition, with little to no explanatory value, right? And you're making that proposition that goes against their seemings is going to be less parsimonious than the fact that most seemings are true, right? Most, most things that seem to be true are true. Most intuitions that we have about the world are going to be true, more true than random chance. And thus, making a proposition against the seeming, a very strong seeming, like, is one of the laws of logic, Right, it's going to be very unparsimonious. It's going to be unparsimonious without some extra explanatory power that comes with it. Right, and then you just, you're just addressing the one, one of the two tenets of parsimony. Okay. Um, I mean, I spend a lot of time um, trying to like say why I think that it's like more parsimonious to um, be in like a phenomenalist about these things, but I'm feeling a little bit of pressure that's making it a little bit hard to think. So I'll just let you guys talk about what you were talking about. Okay, that's that's cool. Um, if you want to like chat some other time about it, um, then I'm super mm-hmm. down. At place where there's like lots of people paying attention, and you feel like that's on the spot about it. Okay, cool. Thank you. Oh right, yeah, sick. Yeah, I, was, I appreciate talking to you. It's good. <laughs> um, Ephedra, is that your name? Uh, is that what you're yeah. saying? saying it right? Okay. What were you What were you saying about? The uh, well, law of excluded middle. I'm gonna meet up in a sec. I gotta. I gotta. I'm gonna do something. I think that was the place we left off on. Sorry to like uh, the derail happened. Oh, you're good. I don't think it was a derail. Um. Uh. Well, I don't know. It just it just seems odd to me to include, you know, propositions and in arguments that, um, at least. At least to a point seem unprovable right given like you know maybe some finite like computational resources or just the absurdity of the statement i don't i don't mean like a contradiction so much as just like semantically like really ambiguous right um but a lot of people would say are still propositions like this statement is not true you know or is, is false right the liar's paradox or like this statement is not provable or something right could you guys develop some kind of a system here where you like check in with the people who've said nothing and figure out if they've got anything to add? I mean, we were just trying to go back to, you know, a previous conversation. So this might I'm be not like going to lie. Listen, if you, if you have a hard time making straight to yourself in a discord conversation and might be, yeah, there might be time to learn some new social skills. I'm, I'm not going to break you. I don't think, out if we want to talk I don't about think that they, uh, um, conversations. Yeah. You don't really need to like, <laughs> I mean, insult people. I don't think that's very like enlightening, you know? But Whether that's very enlightening. I'm just saying that if the criticism is being lobbied about somebody else, or giving their viewpoint, well, I, don't, I clearly don't think it's steamrolling. I don't think they're, they're just somebody who's a hard time to get room in a conversation with. Right? Like, I, I just did it just now. Right? I think that it's probably better to develop that skill or to break off into a different Discord VC to talk about whatever you feel like talking about. Does anyone want to break <laughs> off to a different yeah, Discord fuck off. chat? Bye. Well, if somebody else wants to or not, it's kind of irrelevant. Sure. All right, mean, so this is one thing or the other thing you, you can do. I don't want to. I'm just asking if anybody wants to like... Wait, if I don't want to? Why, 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 why would I want to? I'm not asking you. Hold on. I'm asking 
everybody <laughs> if anybody would like to go into a different room with me to discuss a different topic so that you guys can t continue to talk about your topic oh, oh that's what you were asking i misunderstood that's what you were asking oh okay yeah yeah sure so if, you wanna, if you want to break off into some other vscore vc that's totally fine look here there are people in gen 2 now anybody who wants to go there is okay down there. perfect Hey, jump in real quick. All right, have a good day. Peace. If you find that other people who can't jump in are lacking in some way, take a moment and consider that only two or three people can consistently speak without being interrupted, and whether it's a trait that they have or something lacking in the others. So it's no, there was one person talking at that point in time. Talk, then it's because you're talking over people, not because they can't jump in. Yeah, sorry, dog. People weren't getting talked over. They were muted. What are you talking you about? They literally said, for the people who me. hadn't... Yeah, so you're talking over me right now. Right, so if you're complaining about me talking over you, they're going to be doing really much. No, we're not Listen, saying anything. They game. asked about people who... They asked just about people who... Me. Just a second. Just a second. Yeah, you just talked over me just now. You just did it there. Yeah, okay. Right? You can so keep repeating most yourself, of the time, but I am they were the talking about... Holy shit, I'm going to have to keep repeating myself. You keep talking over me. You talked over me more than I talked over you. really fair, dude. I got I mean, holy you shit. Jesus you didn't. You're going really to complain about people talking talk over each ahead. other. What do you mean you don't care? <laughs> okay, so... Oh, so they, they were talking about people who me. were muted. They were muted. They weren't getting talked over. They weren't saying anything at all. Is it the people who hadn't said but, anything? But, but when you said that people who couldn't talk had something missing... I said, if Something you couldn't make room for yourself like in the conversation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, it's not hard to find, like, oh, here's a place where people are pausing. Now I can talk here and people aren't going to interrupt me. Yeah, pay you attention to who is always talking and then ask if it's somebody else's problem. Yeah, I don't look. You want to just say, weren't people always talking there? Because your argument makes <laughs> no fucking sense, McLeod. You just sound like a weird crybaby. Yeah, I do that too. Okay. Like,. The conversation ended off on me and somebody else going back and forth on a subject matter. And then after me and the other person went back and forth on a subject matter, uh, I, I specifically asked if uh, Euphreda, or uh, just, fuck, I, I don't know how to ask but I specifically asked if the other person wanted to jump back into the conversation. And I know that they're not steamrolling the conversation. Okay, they're very you're not under attack. I don't, yeah, you're not under attack. This is just <laughs> you just said to consider whether something's work. wrong with me. What are you talking about? If there are two or three people <laughs> who are constantly talking. Maybe it's not because everybody else is lacking something. If there were two or three people who are constantly talking, it'd kind of be really fucking annoying if some other person in the background was like trying to jump into an existing conversation and couldn't find space for themselves. Maybe they should just wait and keep their mouth shut for a second. <laughs> so who's in the background here? Anybody who isn't you? Any, I just started talking. Are you retarded? Why would I think I'm in the foreground of the conversation? I am now. Now that we're talking. During the time we're so talking, talking, talking about, about I wasn't even, talking, in. I was even present. So point of moderation, we have kind of devolved into meta, and I, I just want to um, kind of get back to the topic and just, um, you know, encourage everyone to avoid over-talking and, um, you know, like, let, a, let other people speak if they want to, but obviously, like, the, the discussion is focused that it's going to probably be, like, a few people speaking, so... Yeah, anyway. Yeah, sure. So, um, I'm unclear as the argument still in favor of rejecting the law excluded metal. Um, so I'm still not even know what the argument in favor of that is. Uh, there are some, some charts posted. Are you afraid uh, in the pop out chat? Oh. Uh, can, oh, you, can you elaborate what these are supposed to represent? Oh, these are uh, discursive dilemmas. I think we were talking about ambiguity, and got, I think we were talking to somebody else. I think it was with Coda, and uh, I don't know. I just, I just have these notes, um, totally unrelated. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to provide that because there's just an interesting kind of aside. Sure. Or law of excluded middle, yes or no? Yes. Uh, no. Is it no or oh, is it shit. me? Oh shit, two people disagree, it's over. Uh, I'd say it's a no. Oh wow, okay. Is this off that video that you posted? Uh, no, I found that after, no, I found that after looking a little bit into, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Intuitionistic logic and uh, mathematics on the NLAB and uh, a little bit on SCP. So I've only been reading about this for the last week or so on and off. 
Uh, but it Perfect. aligns pretty well with some of my concerns that I've had about some arguments I've heard recently. And I don't know. You know, it, it, it aligns pretty well with my constructivist epistemology. Um, being like sort of a subset of constructivist logic and mathematics. So. Yeah, I, the issue I have with the LEM denials, I'm not even sure what the fuck they're, what the LEM denialists are saying, right? Like if, if he, well, like all I take the LEM to be saying is just something that's like almost a tautology. So just like, if a statement's a proposition, then it's either true or false. All I take a statement, all I take a proposition to be is just a statement which is either true or false. Like, what are you, what, what is the, what are you, what are you denying when you deny the LEM? Um, well, that's, that's it. So you're denying I mean, that a statement right, which is right, either right. true or false is either true or false? Uh, well, no, I'm just not accepting it as like a, an axiom of like a, you know, a logic. Yeah, so I don't understand what you're denying then, because you're not denying that, you said. So what are you denying? Well, I don't know. People keep saying that I'm denying it, I guess. You know, I, I more or less just don't include it. Might be like the... And by not include it, do you mean you think it isn't true? Um, I don't grant that it's true. I mean, I'm not so you would, yeah. yeah, so you don't think that things that are either true or false are either true or false? Uh, not if they're not provable, or they haven't been proved, or so things which are, haven't been demonstrated. Right? So things which are not provable, but are either true or false. Those are not true or false. Either true or false? No, they haven't been proven to be true or false. Yeah, that's not going to be a denial of the LEM. Saying there are statements that haven't been proven to be true or false doesn't mean that they aren't true or false. Well, no, I'm just not granting that every instance of P and not P is provably true or false. And P is some statement which is either true or false? Um, on the definition that a lot of people say, you know, it is. Yes, they would make the assertion that, like, you know, P or not P, right, is true or false. I'm asking or P is, is some true. statement which is either true or false. That's what this is a stand-in for. It's not a stand-in for non-propositional statements. Like oh, gotcha, gotcha. Well, well, if we haven't proven the P, or we haven't proven that not P, then I wouldn't say that is a proposition. Other people might disagree with me. Sorry, I don't, I don't um, want to. I don't want to sound dickish or anything because I know you're mm -hmm. like operating in good faith. But that doesn't. The question I'm asking you is just what is P a stand-in for? Like, is it a stand-in for a proposition or is it a stand-in for something else? Well, that's a hard one because. I wouldn't say that P, it's small. Well, yeah. Um, I would say we assume that it's a proposition for the purpose of, like, you know, um, like an argument, right? Um, but whether it has a determinate, like, truth value is going to be dependent on whether we can construct a proof for it. Does that sound right? Um, no, I think I understand what you're saying now. It's just that now I'm trying to figure out if we agree that P is, like, we're, if we're saying, like, P can be things that are non-propositional in some cases. The person asserting the LEM isn't going to deny that, like, for non-propositional statements, they're neither true or false. Right? They would agree with right. that. I agree with that. Right. They would just be saying that P is like a proposition. Maybe it's like a presupposition that, like, P is a proposition. Um, well, but I would say, well, you haven't really proved to me that it is. No, that, that, to be clear, what we're, what we're saying is we're just asking what you mean by P. If by P you mean some proposition, right? You mean any proposition that's true, and you'd agree it's true. I, I, but if by P you, say mean that are not, if you mean something that's not a proposition, then we wouldn't agree with that. We'd just be saying, like, yeah, we agree that it's not true or false. Mm -hmm. And so we still have the same view. The only cases where it's, like, you could say there are cases where it's unclear if something's propositional or not, but that's yes. not going to be an issue for the person of the, who thinks that LEM is true. Like, you, you want to say that there are cases right. where it is true that P is something which is a proposition and also is neither true nor false. And in that case, I don't know what you mean by proposition. Like, that's the only thing I can imagine you doing there. It's just like, yeah, there are propositions which are capable of being true or false, but aren't true or false. I just like, I don't know, okay. like, how is it, how is it a proposition then? Well, no, in the case, there are cases in which, like, P or not P, you know, is a proposition, right? Yeah. That's why, right, because we might be able to create, a, you know, like a proof for it, right? Um, we might be able to create a proof for P, or we might be able to create a proof for not P, right? And in that case, P or not P would be true, right? Um, but I wouldn't grant that all instances of P or not P are propositional, because... What does P mean? Uh, well, I wouldn't... <laughs> this is the hard one. So, I know this is really what, this is what you're asking. So, um, to me, right... It's not clear to me that P is actually a proposition. It could just be an utterance, right? 
Um, another person is asserting that it is a proposition, right? So then, you know, it just follows it, like P or not P. I'm asking you, what do you mean when you say P? Um, for me, it's just a statement that does not have a uh, determinate proof value. Yeah, I agree. Those are non-propositional. Do you agree? Um, they are... Uh, I would say at one point... This is kind of hard. Um, well, it depends on if we've proved it yet. So if we haven't, then I would say it's more of an epistemic issue. Or it's just like, I don't know, right? Um, if I were to assume that it was, regardless of my knowledge of it, right? Like, independent of my knowledge of it. Um, well, we I would say like, proven yeah, statements probably. with indeterminate truth values, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it doesn't depend on that. Are statements with indeterminate truth values mm -hmm. propositions? Um, I would say no. Okay, then the LEM doesn't say anything about those. Right, I understand. Yeah, the LEM is just saying all propositions are either true or false. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I think it's more of an epistemic issue, where it's like people are saying that, you know, P or not P is true, right? An instance, like a given instance is, right? Um, but I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm not sure if it is or not, because I don't just assume that every instance of P or not P, you know, is propositional. Right. Yeah, you can say now, the statement's and, non-propositional. That wouldn't be right. you denying the law of these to the middle, though. Um, like, if I say chicken or not chicken? Mm -hmm. Chicken mm -hmm. or not chicken? Pick one! Like, you could just be like, dog, those aren't propositions. Yeah, I think I... So, I think I know what I need to work on. Um, I think I need to work on my presentation because uh, I think I have an idea of what I want to convey. Uh, I just don't... I just don't have, like, the you know, linguistic tools to do so. I get you, I feel you. Yeah. I wonder, um... Sometimes. Yeah, true. Um, I wonder if um, there's something to do with uh, vagueness here, and that we actually just need to have a different understanding of propositions. So it's, like, not just either true or false, but um, maybe admitting for some third value or some range of values, like something in between true and false, right? Um, like I haven't, I haven't actually looked into this in detail, but there's um, there's something called fuzzy logic, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I just take the fuzzy logic as not denying the LEM either. I think it's grounded out of the LEM. I think you need that for the axiomatic uh, through understanding definitions. Um, and then once you have those, now you're just like you're just doing um, you're just doing math with like uh, values between zero and one and right? just mm -hmm. floating points. It just doesn't, it doesn't seem to me to be a denial of the LEM. It just seems like math. Okay. Yeah, it's kind I'm of like somewhat curious. What if, um, I've done like the lightest reading ever on fuzzy logic. I think I heard it brought up one time in a debate between like a guy named Noodles and Ask Yourself like forever ago. Mm -hmm. um, what is what does it seek to represent? So uh, it seeks to represent uh, like vagueness. So for example, um, take uh, um, Graham Priest gives the example of like Mary, right? She she she's born young and then she becomes old. But we we wouldn't say that like she, it's like there's a moment in which she becomes like old 100 percent and like young 100 percent, right? It's not like she like the proposition she's young is always like 100 percent true and then suddenly becomes 100 percent false, right? It's like a gradient. So fuzzy logic seeks to represent uh, truth not in like one and zero, but more on a scale between one and zero. Um, and then propositions like, right, the negation would, like, you have a value of x, which is the truth value of a proposition, its negation would have 1 minus x, and then you have different models for how you have uh, impl implication and uh, conjunction. But basically, yeah, that's the project. You can critique it, you can like it, I like it, and I critique it. You can't measure Young to begin with, that's a subjective estimate, so can okay, you what find another cold? example? Well, we have age, right? But also, let's take cold, if you don't like uh, young. Although young is a perfectly good example, I think. But cold, right? What about cold? Right, I have tea. I pull it out of my... Uh, I just so make tea. It's really hot. I wait two days. It's now really cold. Uh, so, is well, it, it like... It should be room temperature, but it's still subjective. What is cold I live to in you Antarctica. different from what is cold to an ice cube. I live in Antarctica. This is, like, irrelevant. But, but yeah, like, it, it's not the case that you always need to precisely define and then, like, you have a, a moment when it becomes one and zero. Just, like, we're taking language to be something on a gradient or, or vague. So, fuzzy logic seeks to represent that. These gradients are subjective. They don't have any actual uh, weight All to them. All of words are subjective. Whoa. Uh, you don't mean subjective, you mean vague. And that's what fuzzy logic seeks to represent.
Vagueness. No, no, it's subjective. Like, if it's 30 degrees out, then 40 degree water will feel warm to you, right? But if it's 70 degrees out, 40 degree water will feel cold to you. Okay. Well, then, perhaps what somebody means when they say it's hot or it's cold is just in relation to them, in which case it's going to have a truth value. So it doesn't track the sample point. It's just a misunderstanding. Yeah, well, also, did I say like that hot and cold don't have truth values, or just that they have subjective truth values? Um, like the sun is just subjectively well, hot. Would you say that? I don't. I would not say that. Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't know. I guess it maybe maybe not warm not other stores. Maybe but uh, I believe it's true or it's false that something feels cold or warm to me. I don't. I don't know. I don't know why that would be repeating yeah, what Devil Tech is saying. Yeah, exactly. It's just like totally tangential to say something like that's subjective. Like, yeah, yeah. So you can come up with the cases where the vagueness is subjective. Like, I agree. The, the, the vagueness is subjective and all definitions of words are subjective. That's not a problem for the candidate. Yeah. It's not a problem for the example. Right? Yeah, it's we either said it. I like. It's like, yeah, it if I say I like the taste of ice cream, right? Like, that's subjective. It just means the same thing as saying ice cream tastes good. But it's like, obviously, it's true or false. If your anchor points are judgments that can change based on other factors, they're subjective. You aren't talking about whether the sun is up. You're talking about whether another star would call the sun hot. Okay, so now can you answer my question? Context dependent, well, which isn't the same as objective, but that like you also do. You, do you think like the sun yeah, is I think dependent is hot? different from objective? Wait, I uh, am, Claude. I, I, yeah, wait, wait, Claude. Do you think the sun is just subjectively hot? Um. Well, depends who you ask. Are you asking another star that burns hotter? Yeah, never mind, never mind. I, no, think, that, I, think, that, I think that by subjective, we just mean relative, right? Okay. Yeah, it can be relative, and that's just going to be tangential. It doesn't matter to the point, though. I can also take things that are not relative. Like, for example, the term yeah. like black and white, right? These are colors, but there's also a gradient in between them. Is, is RGB of 254, not 255, and then all zero, it, it, uh, like five times, that's really close to white, but it's not perfectly white. Would we say it's like, like the, the, the truth value of this is white is zero? It's kind of unintuitive, right? We would want something that uh, like, can get closer to truth as, as we get closer to the uh, perfect object. Yeah, I, don't I don't know. There's individual color values or, or saturation well, values or moon values. Yeah, you need individual values or continuum. Colors. To have continuum, you need individual values. That no one's saying otherwise. Like here's a here's no a continuum case is actually a lack of individual values. No, here's a case where it's like objectively half, individual. Okay, go ahead, Synthon. I was just gonna but, come up with the, I was gonna go with this example to make it like nice and clear and maybe help get uh, get the confusion out on the subjective grounds. Where like obviously all definitions of every word is uh, fundamentally subjective. But if I say something like, the Earth is not round, that's a pretty objective statement. You probably say it's objectively false. But the Earth isn't perfectly round. It's just almost round. People could like be a nerd, they could push up their glasses and say, oh, it's an oblate spheroid. Right? But if somebody said the Earth is a sphere, the Earth isn't flat, it's a sphere. We'd say, yeah, that person isn't technically correct, not exactly correct, but they're pretty close. And so we wouldn't say that they're like, just totally wrong. Yep. We'd just say that they're like close to the truth. Exactly, and you want to, like you don't want things that are just like trivially true or like just void of like oh the earth is earth shaped okay wow thank you uh, right uh, you you yeah oh, and again I mean oh, Grand Priest also talks about that and when he covers I really recommend everyone read the book uh, Introduction to Non Classical Logics he writes very very well very, very very well oh my god but yeah so he gives the example of like we don't want also logic that has like uh, dis the distinct or what's the discrete discrete steps like you don't want that like you can only take. Uh, steps of one over two hundred fifty-five, right? But there is no in between. You want actual an actual gradient. Otherwise, you fall into the same paradoxes that not paradoxes, you know, an intuitive results that just one and zero, one and zero give. But yeah, either way, I mean, do you deny that there's a continuum of colors between white and black, or do you think there's only two hundred fifty-five of them? Um, Claude, he's thinking. Um, white is all the colors, and black is none of them. So is red, that what I ask now? Red is white? I mean, if you ask a question that doesn't make sense, I'll give an answer that does. Do you remember my question? What? what? Is there a continuum between the color black and the color white? When white is uh, comprised of every color and black is the absence of color? No. Right. And so you can have... I can also take blue and red. I can make a continuous transition between blue and red. Do you agree? If you set anchor points outside of blue and red, and then trace them through a media such as a prism uh, that is separating out the white light, then yes. Right. I mean, what, what are you but, really asking me? Like, you have okay. to be really specific so, here. 
Okay, so are you, do you know what epistemicism is? Probably. Okay. Epistemicism, for those who do not know, it's like a solution to vagueness, which almost everyone rejects, but some stick to it, where it's like, we have some vague predicates, like young, like hot, like almost all, every predicate, right? So epistemicism says that there, like either our terms are wrong, or that there is an actual truth in reality, but it actually jumps between 100% true and 100% false, we just could not know it, we cannot approach it, we either can, like, we need to specify further, or it's just like, like, yeah, the idea that reality is, like, well-defined, we just, like, can, cannot get to it, which is kind of crazy. Right, or, or you can just I say, oh, do, you, do you think big? Okay, so so do you think the term young has meaning? I can use it in a like way that is not very subjective. Like for example, a baby that was just born, a human baby that was just born, is young. Do we agree on that objectively? Objectively young. Um, only if you're looking at their expected lifespan. Yeah, that's why I said human. What? What? So you think somebody like dying oh. young is a contradiction? Yeah, also, if we, had a, if we had a world where all humans die at the age of one, they would all die young. So it doesn't matter relative to the expected uh, lifespan. Well, they wouldn't have any idea of living past that. It so. doesn't matter. Why are you so, to... like, do you not know how, what hypotheticals are? Let's say that we had intelligent babies that know what young is. Okay, well, why is this? What, why even say this out loud? Come on, dude. <laughs> I didn't understand what I said. I did understand. You said that the babies would not know what young is. No, no, no. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> Eric, I'm sorry, I'm Eric. Saying that they would, even if they were intelligent, right? You're saying hypothetically they're intelligent. I'm saying even if they were intelligent in that situation, they wouldn't have a concept of old. You're asking me if young is a subjective measure, a relative measure. Well, can we if you have ask a, a slightly younger baby, okay, then that baby question. you're talking about isn't young. So can we, is, you're, is you're there a possible the, world in, in which all humans... Right. Is there a possible world in which all humans die young? Because the way you defined it, relative to the expected value, the, it sounds like the answer is analytically no. That feels false. Your definition might be fucky. What, what's your response? I think everyone who dies under 120 dies young. Yeah. Thanks. Under 120? Is, is anyone here capable of answering questions? <laughs> I don't know. I think, unironically, I think most of the people in the server are actually kind of like reasonable individuals. The cloud is kind of, um, so far, a little crazy. He keeps doing this thing where he's like, Gets confused about how words work. Yeah. Like, no, I don't. Ways. No, I don't. No. Also, I mean, if, if you want to not have a concept, logic. I want to. Mm -hmm. I want to clear one thing up to maybe help Cloud understand. Them not having a concept of what it means to be young doesn't matter because they're not the ones saying the phrase "those people are young." Sample tax is the one saying that. So when you interpret, but what are you trying to prove, mean? man? What are you trying to what? get at? Why, why do you have you to wrong. use these relative terms? I, Jesus Christ! I'm explaining why you were mistaken. Are you drunk? Are you sober? Are you high? Why are you so <laughs> aggro, bro? I'm so I'm aggro. Why you gotta use these relative right? terms when you could use some okay, values okay, okay. that's actually distinguishable like, without somebody's you opinion? What are enlightenment if you're just here to, like, insult people's opinions and, like, only like. respect people's opinions if they agree yes. with you? Yes. I don't agree with sample text. I don't believe in fuzzy logic, you fucking idiot. Okay, no, then I don't disagree either. respectfully I like that, but I instead it. of insulting people and calling people idiots, you know? The reason why he know? was insulted and called an right. idiot is because he interrupted in the middle of a sentence to say something snarky. Do you, what, That's what, okay. what, what kind of response did you want me to give him? People are snarky sometimes. Answer like, my question. What kind of response did you want me to give him? People get upset sometimes. Everything is okay. Oh, wow. Okay. People are snarky sometimes and then I insult them? Crazy. People insult people yeah. sometimes. And then people talk through their emotions and feelings instead of being like exclusively like... This I'm is right not a therapy session. Wow, do you want to talk through emotions and feelings, Claude? I don't think talking about was, enlightenment not, and being no, like I, you guys are uh, very exclusively yeah, left-brained. I'm not, okay, I'm I'm not talking about therapy logic. session with the mentally ill. I'm not here for that. I don't know. My, the mentally my, I'm ill are actually right now. the healthy because they respond to their emotions, like and the people who don't, don't react to their emotions okay. are okay. Okay. Level, Do you want to talk about your emotions, Can we like move on? Thank you. Yeah, let's move on. So either way, or can since someone advise you lied, me you lied about you me? Stop I don't know. Stop that talks talking. about things that you stop talking. Aren't. Okay, bubble tea. Stop just talking. left brain logic. Stop. stop. Okay. You'll thanks. never be enlightened, okay? okay? Just give up. You're correct. Stop trying. Anyway, <laughs> I don't believe in fuzzy yeah, logic. Yeah, of course, because okay, it's I a dream. Critique. I said I don't. I have critiques. Uh, <laughs> with the vagueness cases sample, um, with the vagueness cases, usually the um the thought process I go with is just that. In cases where it seems like they're almost correct, if we think about like, oh, technically, what does it really mean? Usually, we're just misinterpreting them, and what it, but they just actually are correct. Like when somebody says it's the screen is white, in a case like that, what they're referring to as white isn't perfect whiteness. They're referring to a, like a, a broader bandwidth.
uh, broader the bandwidth. Is yeah, right. yeah, okay, uh, so you might we are under-specifying. But also, here are some things that, like, normal one and zero, like, distinct two-valued logic yeah. versus, where it's like, some person can be more wrong than another person, right? So both people can say yeah. a false proposition, but one would be more wrong. How do you address that? Yeah, in the cases where we want to say one person is even more wrong than another person, I think what we're trying to get is an intuition about, like, them having more false propositions, they believe. Well, no, I can just have one proposition. For example, I, my age is 20, but not perfectly 20. If someone here came and said, you're 21, and the other person said, you're 90, both of them are wrong, one of them is more correct. <laughs> I understand what you mean right? in that case. Yeah, I don't think the fuzzy logic actually gives us an account for that, because it's still it's restricted to 0 to 1. But in the case of that, I think that what we mean when someone basically says the person is more wrong is just that the the number they got is more distant from the true value. I, I don't think there's any like actual LEM violation. I think all of the things actually make down into things that are true for the LEM. Okay. Right, we say they're more wrong. We don't. We wouldn't say that like they're more wrong and that like one is one is not false. They're both false. Well, I mean, we might reject that there's either true or false. Yeah, you, we have to, to deny LEM. But I'm, I'm just saying in this case, I don't think we're actually doing that. I think all we mean when we say one person is more wrong than another one is just that they were further from the truth. And by further from the truth, we just mean something that doesn't violate the LEM. We just mean something. If they had a variable, yeah, the variable yeah. that they placed, if they weren't, yeah, if they were. Yeah, just like, okay, I get it. You just distance them. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, uh, like PA doesn't violate like, the LEM. Okay. So you have like quantities in that. PA being? Piano arithmetic. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You know okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, 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 okay. But either way, either way, either way. Um, yeah, I'm, the best critiques of fuzzy logic is that it's isomorphic with, like, two-valued logic. You can just introduce yep. uh, a continuous predicate. It's, like, mm -hmm. easy. <laughs> just yeah, exactly. boom. Or, or, like, here's the question. So you, the, the first critique that you should have is, like, okay, what about meta propositions? For example, let's say the proposition that T is hot is, like, has a truth value of 0.9. Okay? Then what, what is the truth value of the proposition? The proposition that T is hot has a truth value of 0.9. What is the truth value of that? Is it 100? Is it zero? Is it 0.9? What is it? Right. it mm -hmm, we yeah. we want to say it's like we want to say it's either one or zero, but we might also want to say it's a continuum because like you can be more wrong about it, right? If I say 0.00, mm -hmm. 0, 0 0.88899999, that's really close, but not it. You know, so I don't know. It, you you have to push the fuzzy logician, uh, the, the fuzzy the fuzzyoid to give you an answer to that, and then critique it. Yeah, I know, that's my that's answer. Good. But yeah, so if they say it's like either a hundred percent true or hundred percent false, the meta proposition, then it's literally just isomorphic with uh, true value logic. Just again, introduce a continuous predicate. But yeah, I don't know. No, I like that. That's really good.